In 1999, Nozizwe Madlala Routledge was placed in a seemingly untenable position. She's a Quaker and believes in non-violence, and she'd just been asked to be Deputy Minister of Defence. The Department of Defence, even though it was the South African National Defence Force, carries arms and is organised to kill. Zero. And there I was being asked to be the second most senior person in the Department of Defense. And in fact, I laughed because uh, in the media, somebody said it's like putting a vegetarian in charge of a butcher shop. And that, that's, what, that's, that, that's how big the contradiction is. Now, this is where you said yes. You took a leap of faith into the space where you would have to integrate very, very deep things, your job and your belief. I'd taken a lot of leaps of faith before in my life. Like when I joined the ANC, when it was banned, I knew I could be locked up, I could be killed. But I believed it was the right thing to do. With her spiritual beliefs guiding her, Nozizwe decided to take on the role. Foreign policy had changed and she could find purpose in the position. Our own foreign policy was geared towards using our uh, a South African National Defence Force in a peacemaking role, in a peacekeeping uh, role, rather than in, a, in, in, in fighting wars. I did say to one of the most senior uh, generals, what do they think of me uh, being a Quaker and being uh, a woman? He said to me, to be honest, ma'am, they are more worried about you being a woman than you being a Quaker. I think it was very unique. I am not aware of anybody else. Nozizwe refused to wear a uniform and promoted women's role in the army. She highlighted the peace agenda, unwaveringly driving the army as a peacekeeping force, doing good and alleviating suffering in times of peace. Slowly, she earned respect. In the Department of Defense, they had a, a slogan, uh, to achieve peace, you must prepare for war. And I had them thinking, why should you prepare for war if what you want to achieve is peace? Why not prepare for peace if what you want to achieve is peace? It took me some time to understand why some of them in the Department of Defense leadership were against this idea of using the defense force in non-military ways. In their idea, you are softening the soldiers, you are making them human, you are planting the sharp end. For them, the sharp end is when they are this machine that's ready to kill, that's not really worried about building houses or saving babies. And if you ask them to do this work, you are actually making them soft. But I'm talking more about that awareness of life as sacred. During her five years in the job, the army fixed bridges, built houses and worked in emergency relief. Their role in saving flood victims' lives in Mozambique not only touched the hearts of the stricken survivors, but the South African public as well. While Nozizwe was Deputy Minister of Defence, members of the army who were HIV positive were being given antiretroviral drugs. She witnessed firsthand their life-saving effects and wanted this for the rest of South Africans. And so when she took on her next role as Deputy Minister of Health, she had open meetings with the Treatment Action Campaign, an organisation that the government shunned. I wasn't wanting to be different. In fact, I was following government policy where we had reached a point on paper where we were saying there's a link between HIV and AIDS and that there is a role for ARVs. That was the policy and that is the policy that I was pursuing. I didn't think it was something wrong to start with. I didn't think it was something to hide. But the Minister of Health, Mantel Shabalala Msimang, viewed Nozizwe's meetings with the TAC as consorting with the enemy. And when Simang famously outlined her stance on nutrition versus ARVs, singing the praises of garlic and beetroot, Nozizwe was outraged. She was at a crossroads and her job became intolerable. Vulnerability and fear, doubt are real. The 
spiritual exercise and practice helps you to overcome the fear, the doubt, the vulnerability, gives you strength. I felt the strength when I was afraid, but the truth liberated me. Standing up there for the truth made me feel strong. I felt fearless. Nozizwe's leap of faith was to stand up for the truth no matter the consequences and she publicly backed TAC leader Zaki Ahmad. I openly said I admired his courage and thought that he needed uh, to be recognized with an award because there were all these many people whose lives had been saved, had, whose quality of life had been improved through the campaign of the TAC. Of course, the other thing that I actually mentioned at that meeting was how the denialism at the highest level in our country was actually killing people. And this is when a professor at UCT tapped Jeremy, my husband, on the shoulder and said, does Nozi know what she's saying? It was a career-limiting step to say what she said, to take that leap and praise Zaki Ahmad publicly in that way. I think she decided to to say everything, she thought. Uh -huh. Whatever it took. Yeah. And whatever the outcome. Yes, yeah. I think that even if you know that the decision that you're making is one that millions of people outside that room might want you to make, in that moment of making the decision, it's you're alone. Things spiraled downwards for Nozizwe. Viewed as insubordinate, she was criticized and hamstrung from doing her job. The impasse was played out in the media and watched by millions of South Africans. So Nozis, were you in a position where you were the deputy health minister and you were saying one thing which was government policy and the minister and even the president were acting out, if you like, along a different line. Mm. That must have been very hard to go to work every morning where you had that battle and you couldn't action what was actually on paper and policy. It is really tough. I felt like I was in an abusive relationship just getting up and going to a meeting where I knew I was going to be confronted um, by her anger, by her rejection, was very, very difficult. Finally, things came to a head when a trip Nozizwe took to Spain was deemed unauthorized and saw President Thabo Mbeki asking her to resign. When he sent me off to go and write a letter resigning, I felt a sense of defiance that I wasn't going to write this letter, but I also felt I needed to go to the ANC and talk to the, to the leadership and get their advice, which I did do. You didn't write that letter of resignation? No. So you were fired? So I was fired. <laughs> 